regalia we run ourselves aground. Bestir Mahati! Bestir Mahati! Surely Mahat! Hi, hi, Mahat! Take in the topsail! Tend to the master's whistle! Well, all till thou burst thy wind, of Roman up. Good boatswain, have care! Where's the master? Play the pen! I pray now, keep the law! Where's the master? Do no, you not hear him, you mar our labors? Keep your cabins, you'll do a sister storm. Nay, good be patient. When the sea is hence, what care these roars for name a king? To cabins, silence, trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I love better than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to sound and keep the peace of the present, I will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thank to yourself live so long and make yourself ready in your cabins for the mischance of the hour that so hath. Dearly, my heart, out of my way, I say. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His face is perfect gallows. Stand fast, good faith, to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable. For our own doth little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Down with the top man! Yeah, yeah, lower and lower! Bring her to try with the main course! A plague upon their howling, the worse than the weather our office. Yet again, what do you hear? Shall we give our and drown? Have you a mind to say? Ah, pox in your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, incurable dog! Look you there! Hang her, hang! You horse and insolent noise, make we are less afraid to be drowned than our. No one's ever drowning, but the ship went out strong in a nutshell, and this week he's an unstaunched way. Set her up two courses! Lay her up! Oh, oh. Lay her up to sea again! Oh, oh, oh. Lay her up! We split! But must our vows be told! Oh, king and prince had prayers, let us assist them, for our case is at hand! Not of patience! We merely cheated of our lives by drunkards! This wide, tough rascal, which thou might lie drowning the washing of ten times! Will they hang yet? Though every drop of water sweat against it, and gape it wide to blood him! Mercy, I oh, 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 Now would I give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground. Long heat, round furs anything, the whales above be done, but I fain would die a dry death. <laughs> It seemed would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea mounting into the welkin sea dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those I saw suffer. A brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship so have swallowed and the frotting souls within her. Be collected, no more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm oh, done. Oh, woe the day. No harm. I have done nothing but incare thee. Thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter. What ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. You ought to know did never meddle in my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee, father. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. So, lie there, my heart. Have comfort. Wipe thou thine eyes. The direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in mine heart, so ordered that there is not a soul, no, not so much perdition as a hair, be did to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry, which thou sawest sink. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding stay, not yet. The time's now come, the very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Oh, certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Of anything the image tell me that hath kept to thy remembrance? Tis far off, and rather like a dream than, a, than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once attended me? Thou hadst, Miranda, and more. But how is it that this lives in thy memory? What seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But that I do not, sir. Twelve years since, Miranda. Twelve years since. Thy father was the Duke of Milan. And a prince of power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou wast my daughter. And 
Thy father was the Duke of Millen, and his only heir of princess no worse issued. Oh, the heavens! But what foul play had we that we came from thence? Or blessed was we did. Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heed thence, but blessedly hope hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the teen that I have turned you to, which is from my remembrance. Please, you father. My brother and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee mark me that a brother should be so perfidious. He who next the world of love, next thyself of all the world I love, and to him put the manage of my state, as at that time through all the signories it was the first, and Prospero the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts without a parallel, those being all the study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy faults, uncle, uh, dost thou tell me? Oh, sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected, how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance and who to trash for overtopping, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or changed them or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office, set all hearts of the state to what tune pleased his ear, so that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verger out on it. Thou tenst not. Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to the closeness and bettering of my mind with that which, but by being so retired, all prized, all popular rate, in my false brother await an evil nature. And my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood, in its contrary as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit, a convoluted son's bound, he being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke. Out of the substitution, and executing the outward faith of royalty, with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing, uh, dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, with your deafness. To have no screen between this part he played and him he played it for, he needs will be absolute melon. Me, poor man, my library was duked him large enough of temporal royalties, he thinks me now incapable. Confederate so dry he was for sway with the king of Naples. Do him homage, give him annual tribute, subject his crown to his crown. And bend the dukedom yet unbowed, the last poor Millen, to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! Now mark your condition and the event, then tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. <laughs> and now the condition. This king of Naples, being to me an enemy inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair melon with all the honours of my brother. Whereon a treacherous army levied, one midnight fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of melon, and in the dead of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence, me and thy crying self. Alas, for mercy! I not remembering how I cried out then will cry it o'er again. It is a hint that brings my knives to it. Hear a little further. And then I'll bring thee to this present business which now is upon, without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded, wench. My tale provokes that question. Dear they durst not, so dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colours fairer painted their foul ends. In few, they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a butt, not rig, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively have quit it. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, a cherubim thou wast that didst preserve me. Thou didst smile, infused with a fortitude from heaven, when I have decked the sea with drops full salt and under my burden groaned, which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we then ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water, which a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, 
Out of his charity, who being then appointed master of this design, did give us, with rich garments, linen stuffs and necessaries, which since have steadied much. So of his gentleness, knowing I loved my books, he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Oh, that I might but ever see that man. Now I arise, uh, sit still, and hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrived, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princes can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heaven thank you for it. And now, good sir, for it is still beating in my mind, your reason for raising this sea storm. Uh, no, thus far forth. By accident most strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath all mine enemies brought to this shore. And by my prescience, I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence now I caught not but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here cease more questions, thou art inclined to sleep. It is a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come. All hail, great master, grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel and all his quality. Hast thou spirit performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ship, now in the beak, in the waist, in the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes what I divide and burn in many places, in the topmast, the yards and bowsprit, what I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightning, the precursors to the dreadful thunderclap, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. The fire and crack so sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. <laughs> My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me. The king's son, Ferdinand, was the first man that leaped, cried, hell is empty and all the devils are here. Why, that's <laughs> my spirit. But was this not nice shore? Close by, my master. But are the aerial safe? Not a hair perished. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou badst me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son, Ferdinand, have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs, and sitting in an odd angle of the isle, his arms in this sad knot. Yeah. Of the king's ship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in that deep nook, where once thou callest me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still-vexed Bermoothies. There she's hid, the mariners all safely under hatches stowed, who, with a charm, conjoined to their suffered labors, I have left to sleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all are met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perished. Ariel, I charge exactly is performed. But there's more work to do. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toils? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, Moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I prithee remember I've done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, served without our grudge or grumbling. Thou hast promised to bait me a full year. Hast thou forgot from what a torment I did free thee? No, sir. Thou hast, and thinkst it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp winds of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. Uh, I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the fowl which Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier? Oh, was she so? 
I must once in a month recount what thou hast been which thou forgettest. This damned witch Psychorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing, from Argea thou knowest, was banished. Uh, for one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is this not true? Uh, I, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant, and for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthly and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee with the help of her more potent ministers and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine within which rift thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, um, freckled whelp, um, hag-born, uh, not honored with human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Go thing, I say so. He, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. Thou best knowest what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Psychorex could not again undo. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that may gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his knotty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spriting gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Hey, say, what shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but mine and thine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take the shape and hither come in. Go, hence with diligence. <clears throat> awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetches in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. Uh, what o, oh, our slave, Caliban? Thou earth, thou speak. There's wood enough within. Come for thy say, there's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Fine apparition, my quaint area, oh, hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. <clears throat> thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth. Oh, as wicked you, as ere my mother brushed with raven feathers from an awesome fen, drop on you both, and southwest blow on you and blister you all o'er. For this. Be sure tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up. Urchins shall for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine by Psychorax, my mother, which thou takes from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me, and madest much of me, and wouldst give me water with berries in and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the brine pits, fresh springs, barren place and fertile. Oh, cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Psychorax, toads, beetles, back light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you stymie in this hard rock, while you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee filth as thou art, with humane care, lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, which had been done, thou didst prevent me, I had people else this isle with Caliban. Oh, horror slave, which any friend of goodness was not take, being capable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other. When thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but would scabble like a thing most brutish, I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. 
But thy vile race, though thou didst learn, has that in it which good natures cannot abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hast deserved more than a prison. Hey, you taught me language. And my prophet on is, I know how to curse. A red plague ride you for learning me your language. Hag seed hence. Fetch us in fuel. Be quick. Our best to answer other business. Shrugs thou malice. If thou neglect'st or dost unwilling what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps. Fill all thy bones with H's. Make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, Brazy. I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my dam's god, Cenobas, and make a vassal of him. So slave hence. <laughs> Hands and then take hands, curtsied when you have and kissed the wild waves with. Come unto these yellow sands and then take hands, curtsied when you have and kissed the wild waves with. For to feet here and there, while we strike the burn and bear. For to feet here and there, while we strike the bird and bear. Hark, hark, bow wow, the watchdogs bark. Bow wow, hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting shant a clear cry. Cock a diddle dog. Where should this music be? In the air or the earth? Hark, hark, bow wow, the watchdogs bark. Bow wow, hark. Hark, I hear the string of the clear the It sounds no more. And sure it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it. Or it hath drawn me, rather. But tis gone. But no, it begins again. Oh, fathom I, thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade. But doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. See him solely ring his knell. What, did he just remember my torment father? Well, this is no mortal no, business, nor no sound of the earth. I hear it now above me. Ding dong, 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 ding but to the spirit. No, Wedge. It eats and sleeps and has such senses as we have such. This gallant thou seest was in the wreck, and but he's something stained with grief. That's beauty's canker. Thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Oh, spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee for this. Most sure the goddess on whom these earths attend. Thou safe my prayer may know if you do remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder, if you be made or not. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the very best of them that speak this speech. Were I but where it is spoken. Thou the best? What wert thou the king of Naples to thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does, I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes never since that ebb beheld the king my father wreck. All that for mercy. Alas, in faith, and all his lords. The Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee, if now to fit to do it. At first sight they have changed eyes. Oh, fine spirit, I'll free thee for this. Uh, a word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Did he move my father to be inclined my way? Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Nick. It works, I see. Sir, sir, one word more. 
They are both in either's powers. But this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. Uh, good sir, a word. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself on this island as a spy to win it from me, the Lord Aunt. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Follow me. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy feet and neck together. Salt water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brooked mussels, withered roots and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Come, follow. No, I will resist such entertainment until my enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial for him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What, my foot, my tutor? <laughs> Put thy sword up, traitor, who makes to show but death not strike thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon draw. <laughs> Pity, I have beseech you, Father. Then say not about my garment. Sir, have pity. I'll be his surety. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What an advocate for an impostor. <laughs> Hush. Thou thinkst there is no more such shapes as he having seen, but only him in Caliban, foolish wench. To the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections, then, are most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. <laughs> Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. Why, so they are. My spirit says in a dream, are all forgotten. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the loss of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued are but like to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid. All corners else of the earth, let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. Come on, <laughs> it works. Uh, come, uh, how quite else thou shalt do me. Be of comfort, sir. My father's of a better nature than he appears by speech. This is unwounded which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Uh, speak not you for him. You, sir, be merry. You have cause, so have we all of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss. Our hint of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the masters are some merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation, few and millions can speak like us. Then wisely, good sir, we are sorrow with our comfort. Pretty beast. He receives comfort like cold porridge. Uh, the visitor will not give him more, sir. Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it will strike. Uh, sir. One, tell. When every grief is entertained as offered, comes to the entertainer. A dollar. Dollar comes to him indeed. You have spoken truer than you purpose. You have taken it wisely than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord. Why, what a spendthrift is in his tongue. It's pretty spare. I have done. But yet he will be talking. Uh, which of he or Adrian, for a good wager, first begins to grow? The old cock. Oh, the cock grows. Done. The wager? A laughter. A match. Though this island seemed to be desert. <laughs> I saw your fame. Uninhabitable and most inaccessible. Yet. Yet. He could not miss. It must needs be of subtle, tender, and delicate temperance. Temperance was a delicate way. Why, and as subtle as he most learnedly Why. delivered. The air breathed upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Or as twere perfumed by a fan. Here is everything advantageous to life. True, save means to live. Of that there's none or little. How lush and lusty the grass is. The grass. How green. <laughs> Why, the ground indeed is tawny. No, uh, with an eye of green in it. Well, he misses not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, which is almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments, being as they were drenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? <laughs> I have very falsely pocketed up his <laughs> report. Methinks our garments are now as fresh as we first put them on in Africa at the marriage of the king's fair daughter Clarabelle to the king of Tunis. It was a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen. Not since Widow Dido's time. Widow, a pox of that. How came that widow in? Widow Dido. What if he had said widower Aeneas, too? Good Lord, how you take it. Widow Dido said you? 
You make me study of that. She was of Carthage, not of Tunis. This Tunis was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. His word is more than the miraculous heart. He hath raised the wall and houses, too. Uh, what impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will take this island home in his pocket and give it his son for an apple. And sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Aye. Why, in good time. So we were talking. That our garments seem as now as fresh as when we first put them on in Tunis. At the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that e'er came oh, there. But I beseech you, widow Dido. Oh, widow Dido. Aye, widow Dido. Sir, is not my doublet as fresh as when I first put it on? I mean in the sort. Uh, that sort was well fished When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You crammed these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there. For coming thence, my son is lost. And in my rage, she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. O oh, thou, mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Oh, sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water whose enmity he flung aside and breasted the surge most swollen that ran to meet him. His bold head above the contentious waves he kept and oared himself with his good arms in lusty stroke to the shore that o'er his wave-borne basis bowed as stooping to relieve him. I not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. So you may thank yourself for this great loss that would not bless our Europe with your daughter but rather lose her to an African where she at least is banished from your eye which hath cause to wet the grief on it. Prithee, peace! You will kneel to and import you otherwise by all of us. And the fair soul herself waited between loneliness and obedience at which end of the beam should bow. We've lost your son, I fear, forever. Milan and Naples have more widows in them of this business making than we bring men to comfort them. The vault your own. So is the dearest of the lost. My Lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness in time to speak at him. You rub the saw when you should bring the plaster. No, very well. And most courageously. It is foul weather and is all good, sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I plantation of this isle, my lord? He'd sow it with nettles. Or docks or mallows. And were king on it, what would I do? To escape being drunk for one of one. In the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate. Letters should not be known. Riches, poverty, use of service, none. Contract, succession, burn, bound of land, vineyard, tilt, none. No use of metal, corn, wine, or oil. No occupation. All men I love. And women, too. <laughs> but pure and innocent. No sovereignty, my lord. Yet he would be king on it. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature shall produce without sweat or never. Treason, felony, fire, pipe, nice use of engine, none. But nature shall produce of its own kind, all poison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects? None, man, all idle, whores and knaves. <laughs> I would with such protection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Oh, save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. <laughs> Sir, do you mock me? My pretty peace, thou dost speak nothing to me. I do well believe, your highness, but did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs, they are used to laugh at nothing. It was you we laughed at. Oh, in this kind of merry fooling, I'm nothing to you. So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. Oh, what a blow was there again. <laughs> Had it not fallen flat long. You gentlemen are of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of the stair if she would continue in it five weeks without changing. Well, we would so. And then go bat fowling. Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you. I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Come, laugh me to sleep, for I'm heavy. Go sleep and hear us. <sighs> Fall so soon asleep. I wish my eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. I pray you, sir, do not, not omit the heavy offer of it. Sleep seldom visits sorrow. When it does, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. Is the quality of the climate? Why doth not it then? Ah, I let think I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together hours by consent. I was rocked as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? No, oh, what might? Oh, no matter. 
Yet methinks I see it in thy face what thou shouldst be. The occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination seems to see a crown dropping upon thy head. What, art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and truly it is a sleepy language, and now it speaks out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose, to be awake with eyes wide open, standing, moving, speaking, and still so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, now let's thy fortune sleep. Die, rather, winks, twice thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. There's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so, too, which... If eat me, trebles the oar. Well, I am standing water. Uh, I'll teach thee how to flow. Do so. To ebb hereditary sloth instructs me. No, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish, whilst thus you mock. How in stripping it you more invest it. Oh, living men indeed most often do so near the bottom run by their own fear or sloth. Prithee say on. Setting of thine eye and cheek will claim a matter from thee, and a birth which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir... Although this lord of weak remembrance, this, he shall be of as little memory when he is erst, hath fear almost persuaded, or he's a spirit of persuasion only, professes to persuade, the king, his son's alive, tis as impossible he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swim. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that, no hope. What great hope have you? No hope that way is another way, so high a hope, that even ambition dare not pierce a week beyond the doubt's discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. She that from Naples can have no note unless the sun were post, the man of the moon's too slow, till newborn chins were rough and razorable. She that the moon will rouse be swallowed, though some cast forth again. And by that destiny, to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue to come. Everything in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? What say you? Tis true my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples. Twixt which regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, How shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? <laughs> Keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wait. Say this were death that now hath seized us. Why, they were no worse than now they are. There be those that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lords who can prate as amply and as unnecessarily as this Gonzalo. I myself could make a chop of this deep chat. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. Then tell me, how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember that you did supplant your brother, Prospero. True, and look how well my garments sit upon me. Much fitter than before my brother's servants were than my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience... I so well eyes that. If twere a kite, twould put me to my slipper. But I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand twixt villain and me. Candid be they, and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother. No better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's asleep. Whom I, with this sword, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever. Whilst you, doing thus, to the perpetual wink for I might put this ancient morsel, this uh, prudence, who should not upbraid our course. But all the rest, they'll take suggestions as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou got Smillen, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee of the tribute which thou payest. And I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together. And when I raise my hand, do you the like to let it fall on Gonzalo? Oh! But one word. My master, through his heart, foresees the danger that you, his friends, are in. And sends me forth, for else his project dies to keep them living. Why do you Open-eyed conspirators, tis time does take. If of life you keep a care, shake off your slumber and... Let us hope this has never ended again! 
How now, who awake? Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? But, Sir Matt, whilst we stood here securing a repose, uh, we thought we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls or rather lions. Did you not hear it? It struck mine most terribly. I heard nothing. Sir, it was a din to fright a monster's ear, to start an earthquake. Sure, it was the roaring of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming, and that a strange one, too, which did awake me. I shaped you, sir, and cried. As my eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, that's verily. Best stand upon our guard, or quit this fearful place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. May the heavens protect him from these beasts. For he is shot on the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. Oh, infections of the sun sucks up from bogs, fins, flats. One prosper fall and make him by insmeal a disease. Spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But there, Lord Kinch, fright me with urchin shows, pinch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way. Unless he bids him. But for every trifle are they set upon me. Sometimes like apes that mow and chatter at me and after bite me. Then like hedgehogs, which lie tumbling in my barefoot way, do mount their pricks at my every footfall. Sometimes am I all wound with adders, who with their cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Lo, now, lo, here comes the spirit of his, and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll lie flat, perchance he may not mind me. Here is neither a bush nor a shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another storm brewing. I hear it sing. The wind. Yon same black cloud, yon huge one, looks like a foul bombard that'll vain shed his liquor. If it should thunder again, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by paleful. What have we here? <laughs> A man or a fish, dead or alive? Ooh, a fish. <laughs> he smells like a fish, a very ancient and fish-like smell. Kind of not to the newest poor John. Strange fish. Were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver. There, with this monster, make a man. If any strange beast there makes a man. <laughs> well, they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar. They will lay out ten to see a dead injured. Leg like a man. And who? Dead like a Warm are my toes. I do now let loose my opinion. Hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that has lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Alas, the storm has come on again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. Now, there's no other shelter hereabouts. <coughs> Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will hear shroud till the dregs of the storm be passed. I shall no more to see, to see, as I die, sir. 
is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. The master, the swabber, the boatswain, and I, the gunner and his mate. Love small, make Marion and Marge dry, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tang, would cry to a sailor, go hang. She loved not the savor of tar nor of pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where'er she did itch. <laughs> Mend the sea boys and let her go hang. Mend the sea boys and let her go hang. This is a very scurvy tune, too. But here's my comfort. Do not torment me, oh. What's the matter? Have we devils here? <laughs> Did they put tricks upon us with savages and men of inn? Ah, I have not escaped drowning to be afeard of your four legs. For it hath been said as proper a man as ever went up. Four legs! <laughs> Cannot make him give ground. And it shall be said so again while Stefano breathes at nostrils. The spirits torment me, oh! This is the monster of the isle with four legs, who hath, as I take it, an ague. Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief, if it be but for that. If I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, He's a present for any emperor that trod on neat's leather. Do not torment me, Prissy. I'll bring my wood home faster. Oh. He's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. I'll give him some of my bottle. If you've never tasted wine afore, I'll go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I shall not take too much for him. He shall pay for him that hath him, and that soundly. Well, thou doth me yet but little harm. Thou wilt, and on I know it by thy trembling. Now prosper works upon me. Come, on your ways. Open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, calf. Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I assure you, and that soundly. You cannot tell who's your friend. Come. Open your chaps again. <laughs> that voice, it could be. But he is drowned and these are devils all defending. <laughs> Four legs and two voices. <laughs> A most delicate monster. His forward voice is to speak well of his friend. And his backward voice is to utter foul speeches and dirty traps. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will cure his ague. Come, Amen. I will pour some in my other mouth. Stefano? <laughs> Does my other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is no monster but a devil. I'll leave him. I have no long spoon. Stefano, thou be a Stefano. Speak to me. Charge me. Be not a fear of this trinculo, thy good friend trinculo. If thou be a trinculo, come forth. I'll pull thee by these lesser legs. <laughs> if any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. <laughs> thou art very Trinculo indeed. How camest thou to be the siege of this moon car? Uh, Can he vent Trinculo? Uh, I took him to be killed by a thunderstroke. But Stefano, art thou not drowned? Oh, I hope thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? Uh, I hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm. Ah! <laughs> oh, but Stefano, thou art alive. <laughs> Stefano, two Neapolitan skate. Do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. <laughs> These be fine things that if they be not striped. That's a brave god in Bel Celestia I will kneel to him. Tell me how thou skate. How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped upon a bed of sack which the sailors heaved overboard. By this bottle, which I made by my hands from the back of a tree since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here. Swear then, how thou escape. Swim ashore, man, like a duck. 
I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. So thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. <laughs> oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? The whole Batman. My cellar's in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, Mooncalf? How dost thine aid you? Ah, uh, thou not dropped from heaven. Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. Oh, I see the inner, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee and thy dog and thy bush. Here, yeah, swear to that. We'll furnish it anon with new contents. Swear! By this good light, a very shallow monster. I, a fear of him, ha! Huh? A very weak monster. The man is the moon. <laughs> a most poor, credulous monster. Well drawn, monster, and good shoe. I'll show thee every fiddle inch to the island. I'll kiss thy foot. I bid thee be my god. By this light, the most perfidious and drunken monster. When his gods is asleep, he'll rob his god. I'll kiss thy foot and swear thyself thy subject. On them down and kiss. I can laugh myself to death. And this puppy headed monster. A most scary monster. I could find it in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. And that the poor monsters are drinking a abominable monster. I'll show thee the best spring. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wit enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunk. I prithee. Let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I, with my long nails, will dig thee pig nuts. Show thee a jay's nest. Instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. Sometimes I'll bring thee to clustering filberts. Sometimes I'll get the young scammels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? Let me lead the way without any more talking. Thank you, old. The king and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Here, bear my bottle. We'll fill up by and by again. Farewell, master! A howling monster, a drunken monster. Ah, I'm no more damned, I'll make poor fish. No fetch and firing, that's requiring. No ice skate gentling, no wash dish. Ben, Ben, Kakali, Ben, has a new master. Get a new man, freedom, hey! Oh, brave monster! Some sports are painful, and their labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious. But the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasant. Oh, she's ten times more gentle than her father's crab, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousand of these logs and pile them up upon a soaring junction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness I'd never like executor. I forget. But these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labor. Most busy that's when I do it. Oh, that's no pray you. Work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up these logs you were enjoying to pile. Pray set it down and rest. When this burns, poor weep for having wearied you. My father's heart is study. Pray rest yourself. He stays for these three hours. Oh, sweet mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you sit down, I'll bear your logs a while. Pray give me that. I'll carry you to the pile. Oh, no, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. But it would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to it. And yours it is again. Poor oh, worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. Oh, no, precious creature. Tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I beseech you, uh, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I broke your head to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration. Worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I abide with best regard. And many's the time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women. But never any with so full soul. But some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. 
But you, oh you, so perfect and so fearless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remember, save from my grasp mine own. Nor have I seen more that I might call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad, I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I could not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape beside yourself to like of. But I travel something too wildly. Can my father's precepts I dare into good guess? I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so. And would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake, am I this patient logman? Do you love me? Oh, heaven, oh, earth. Bear witness to this sound, and crown what I profess with kind event, if I speak true. If hollowly invert what best is voted me to mischief, I beyond all limit of what else in the world do love, prize, and honor you. I'm a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. Fair encounter of two most rare affections. Heaven's rain grace on that which breeds between them. Wherefore weep you? At mine unworthiness, that dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows. Hence, bashful cunning, and prompt me plain and holy innocent. I'm your wife, if you will have me. If you'll not, I'll die your maid. Do be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, but you will or no. Oh, my mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing as bondager of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. <sighs> and now farewell. Till half an hour hence. A thousand. Thousand. So glad of this, as they I cannot be who are surprised with all. But my rejoicing and nothing can be more. I'll to my book. For yet ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. There will not be. When the butt is out, we'll drink water and not a drop before. <laughs> Therefore, bear up and boredom. Servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster, the folly of this silence. <laughs> They say there's but five upon this isle. We be three of them. If the other two be brain like us, the state conquers. <laughs> <laughs> Drink, servant monster, when I bid thee. I can almost set in thy head. Where should they be set else? You are a brave monster indeed if they are set in his tail. My man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. For my part, the whole sea could not drown me. For I swam and I could recover the shore five and thirty leagues by this light off and on. Thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster, or my standard. Your lieutenant, if you list, but he's no standard. Will not run with your monster. Nor go neither, but she'll lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life, if thou beest the good Mooncalf. Oh, that's my honor. Let me lick thy shoe. Oh. I'll not serve him. He's not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster. I am his shape to jostle the constable. Why, thou debauched fish, thou? Was ever a man a coward that hath drunk as much sack as I today? <laughs> oh. Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? <laughs> oh, how oh, he mocked me. Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord? Oh, that the monster should be such a natural... Oh, no, again. Bite him to death, I prithee. Keep Keep a good time in your head. If you prove a mutiny, you the next three. The poor monster's my subject, and he shall not suffer indignity. <laughs> I respect my noble lord. Oh, wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Marry will I. Kneel and repeat it. I will stand... And so shall drink you low. As I told thee, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer that by his cunning has cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou. 
I would my dad and master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Think you all run into no further danger or bite his hand off the plant some of your teeth. I said nothing. <laughs> Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say by sorcery he got it. From me he got it. And if thy greatness will revenge it on him, which I know thou darest, but this thing dare not that much. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. Oh, then shall this be compass. Can you bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him the asleep where thou mayest knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a boy, Ninny, is this, thou scurvy patch? And if it speaks thy greatness, give him blows. And take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink naught but wine. For I'll not show him where the quick freshers are. Thank you, Howell. Run into no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word farther in his tail, and by this hand I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stock fish of thee. What did I? I did nothing. I'll go further off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Sit thou back. <laughs> and do not just give me the lie another time. I did not give thee the lie. Out of your wits and hearing too? A pox of your butt. Oh. This to sack and drinking do. A marine on your monster. And the devil take your finger. Now forward with your tail. Stand further off. Beat him enough after a little time. I'll beat him too. Stand further. Proceed. As I told thee, tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. Ne'er thou mayest brain him, having first eat his books, or with a log batter his skull, or punch him with a stick, or cut his weasel with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but a sot as I am. Thou hast not one spirit to command. Bring all to hate him as rudely as I. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils, for so he calls them, which when he has a heart, he will deck with all. And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her known for ale. I never saw a woman but only Psychorax, my dam, and she. And she is far to pass the Psychorax as great, does he? Is it so brave a lot? Yea, my lord. She will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee for a brave brood. Monster, I will kill this man, and his daughter and I shall become king and queen, save our graces. And Trinkolo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinkolo? Excellent! Give me thy hand. I'm sorry I beat thee. Oh, sorry. But as you live, keep a good clock on your head. Who is in the tap hall? Will he be asleep? Will thou destroy him then? Aye, on mine honor. This will I do. Thou yeah. makest me merry. I am full of pleasure. Let us be jocund. Oh, wilt thou call the catch I thou, thou taught me while there? At your request, monster, I will do reason, any reason. Thank you. Will you sing with us? Flout him and scout him and scout him and flout him. Scout him and flout him. Thought is free. Flout him and scout him and scout him and flout him. Flout him and scout him. Thought is free. Flout him and scout him. Scout him and flout him. Scout him and flout him. Thought is free. Scout him and scout him. And that's not the tune. What is this thing? This is the tune of our catch. Played by the pitcher. Nobody. If thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, take it as thou wilt. Forgive me my sins. He that dies pays all debts. I defy thee. Mercy on her. Hast thou feared? No, monster, not I. Be not afeared. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight but hurt not. Sometimes. A thousand twangling instruments do hum about mine ears. And sometimes voices that if I then had waked after a long sleep will make me sleep again. And then in dreaming the clouds me thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That when I waked I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me when I shall have my music for nothing. Oh, and Prospero is destroyed. I have to be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let us follow. 
And after you are worse. Please, monster, and we'll follow. I would I could see this paperer. He lays it all. Well, come. I'll follow, Stefano. By your patience, I need must rest me. Oh, Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness to the darling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. Mm. He is drowned whom thus we straighter find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad he's so out of hope. Do not for one repulse forego the purpose you resolve to effect. The next advantage we will take truly. And let it be denied. For now, they are oppressed with travel. They will not nor cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh. Let's be denied. No more. What harmony is this? My good friends, hark! Marvelous sweet music. Give us kind keep us heavens. What are these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that they're unicorns. That in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix throne. One phoenix at this moment reigning there. I'll believe both, and what does those one credit come to me, and I'll be sworn tis true. Travelers ne'er did lie, no fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say there were such islanders, for certainly these are people of the island. Though they are of monstrous shape, yet note, their manners are more gentle kind, and of our human generation you shall find many. Nay, almost any. Honest lord, thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. I cannot too much muse. Such shape, such gesture, and such sound, expressing although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Praise in departing. They vanish strangely. No matter, since they have left their viands behind. For we have some. Will it please you eat of what is here? Not I. Oh, no, never fear, my lord. When we were boys, who would believe there were such mountaineers, do lap like bulls, whose throats hang hanging at them, wallets of flesh, or that there were such men, whose heads stood in their breasts, which now we find, each put out of five for one, will bring good warrant of. I will stand to and feed, although my last. No matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord the duke, stand to and do as we. <laughs> men of sin, the destiny that hath to instrument this lower world in what is in it, the never surfeited sea has caused to belt you up. And on this island where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live, I have made you mad, and even with such like valor do men hang and drown their proper selves. You fools! I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds, or with the mocked at stab kill the still closing waters as diminish one doll that's in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strength and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed him to the sea which has requited him and his innocent child, or which foul deed, the powers, delaying, not forgetting, heaven sends the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. We of thy sons, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering tradition, worse than any death can be at once. Shall step by step attend you in your ways, whose wrath to guard you from, which here in this most desolate isle, else falls upon your head, is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. Strangely, the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, mine Ariel, a grace <coughs> is head devouring. Of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. So with good life and observation strange. My meaner ministers their several kinds have done. My high charms work. These mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power. And in these fits I leave them. While I go visit Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, 
And his and mine, love, darling. In the name of something holy, sir. Why stand you in this strange town? Oh, it is monstrous. Monstrous. Methought the villain spoke and told me of it. The wind did sing to me. And the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It debased my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is muddied, and I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddied. With one fiend at a time, I'll fight to leave the door. I'll be thy second. They are all three of them desperate. Their great guilt like poison given to work a great time after, now against to bite the spirits. I do beseech you, there are supper joints. Follow them swiftly, and hinder them from what this ecstasy may provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you a third of mine own life, or that for which I live. Who once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here before heaven I ratify this, my rich gift. No, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast of her. For you shall find she will outstrip all praise and leave it hope behind her. I do believe it's against an oracle. Then as my gift and thine own acquisition worthily purchased, Take, my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin not before all sanctimonious ceremonies, may with full and holy rite be ministered, no sweet aspersion shall the heaven let fall to make this contract go. But barren hate, sour eyed disdain and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weed so loathly that you shall hate it both. Therefore take heed as Hyman's lamp shall light you. As I hope for quiet days, perish you in long life. With such love as tis now, the murkiest den, the most opportune place, the strong suggestion our worst genius can, shall never melt mine honor into lust, to take away the edge of that day's celebration, when I shall think, or fever steeds are fonder, the nightcap chain below. Fairly spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What, my industrious servant, Ariel? What would my potent master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellows, your last service did worthily perform, but I must use you in such another trick. Go bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power, here to this place. Incite them to quick motion, for I must here be sore upon the eyes of this young couple, some vanity of mine art. It is my promise and they expect it of me. Presently? I with a twink. Before you can say, come and go, and breathe twice and say, so, so, each one tripping on his toe will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master? No? Dearly, my delicate Ariel, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I conceive. <clears throat> Look, thou be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rain, for the strongest oaths are straw to the fire in the blood. Therefore, be more abstemious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir, the white cold virgin snow upon my heart debates the odor of my liver. Well. <laughs> Now come, my Ariel. Appear and pertly. Uh, bring a corral rather than want a spirit. Appear. No tongue or lie. Be silent. Mountains where live nibbling sheep, and flat meads thatched with stover them to keep. Thy banks with pioned and twilled brims, which spongy April at thy hest be trims to make cold nymphs chaste crowns. And thy broom groves, whose shadow the dismissed bachelor loves, being last lord. Thy pole clipped vineyard, and thy sea marge, sterile and rocky hard, where thou thyself dost air. The queen of the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I, bids thee leave thee, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport. Her peacocks fly amain, approach rich Ceres, here to entertain. Hail, many-colored messenger that ne'er doth disobey the wife of Jupiter. Who with thy saffron wings upon thy flowers Diffuses honey drops refreshing showers And with each end of thy blue bow Dost crown my bosky acres and unshrubbed down Rich scarf to my proud earth Why 
hast thy queen summoned me hither to this short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to a state on the blessed love. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as thou dost know, do now attend the queen, since they did plot the means that dusky dis my daughter got, her and her blind boy scandaled company I have forsworn. Of her society be not afraid. I met her dear, she cut in the cloud toward Pappas, and her son doved round with her. Here thought they to have done some wanton charm upon this man and maid, whose vows are that no bed right shall be paid till Hyman's torch be lighted. But in vain, Mars' hot minion is returned again. Her wasp shedded son has broke his arrows, Swears he will shoot no more, but play with sparrows and be a boy right out. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gate. How does my bounteous sister go with me to bless this twain, that they may prosperous be and honored in their issue? Honor rich as marriage blessing, prodigious and increasing, holy treasures. Majestic vision and harmonious tommingly. May I be bold to think these spirits? Mm -hmm. Spirits which by mine art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancy. Oh, let me live forever. So rare and wondered, Father and a wise makes this place paradise. Sweet now silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously there's something else to do. Hush and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of the wine drink brooks, with your sedged crowns and ever harmless looks, leave your crisp channels. And on this green land, answer your summons. Juno does command. Come, temperate nymphs, and help to celebrate a contract of true love. Be not too late. You sunburnt sicklemen of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday, your rye straw hats put on, and these fresh nymphs encounter every one in country footing. <laughs> Conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his companions against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. Uh, well done. Avoid your no arm. Your father's in some passion that works him strongly. Never till this day, so I am touched with anger so distempered. You do look my dismayed, my son, as if you were. Well done. Be troubled no more, sir. Our revels now are ended. Be cheerful. These are actors, as I foretold you, but all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, they all which it inherits shall dissolve. 
And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. My old brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell and repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We wish, we your, wish peace. your peace. Come with a thought, I thank thee, and you come. Thy thoughts I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban and its followers. I, my commander, I thought to have told thee of it when I presented Ceres, but feared lest I might anger thee. Say, Spirit, where did Sir lead these varlets? I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So full of valor were they, that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, and beat upon the ground for kissing of their feet, but always bending toward their project. Then I beat upon my tabor, at which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears that they, my lowing, followed through toothed friars, sharp furzes, picking goss and thorns which entered in their frail shins. At last I left them in that filthy mantle pool beyond your cell. They are dancing up to the chins that the foul lake or sunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retained now still. The trumpery in my house. Go bring it hither, for sale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains you mainly taken all, all lost, quite lost. And as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I will plague them all, even to roaring. Oh, come. Hang them on this line. Pray you tread softly that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We now are near his cell. Monster, your fairy, what you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than play the jack with us. Monster, I do smell old horse piss. But my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. You hear, monster? If I should take displeasure against you, look you. Thou art but a lost one. Good, my lord, give me thy favor still. Be patient, for the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly. All's hushed, is midnight yet. I but to lose our bottles in the pool. There's not only disgrace and dishonor in that, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding. Yet this is your harmless fairy monster. Don't go fetch off my bottle if I be your ears for my... Lily, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Do that good mischief, which may make this island thine forever, and I thy caliban, for I thy footlicker. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. O oh, King Stefano, O oh, Peer, O oh, worthy King Stefano, look what a wardrobe is here for thee. Leave it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Oh, ho, oh, monster, do you not think we know it belongs to a frippery? Ho, oh, King Stefano. You know, put off that gown. Oh. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. Oh, the dropsy drown this fool! What do you mean to dope us on such luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If he awake from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with pinches. Make our strange stop! Be you quiet, monster! Mr. Swine, is not this my jerkin? Now is the jerkin under the line. Now, jerkin, you are like to lose your hair and prove a ball, jerkin. Do, do, we steal by line and level, and like your grace. I thank thee for that jest. He has a garment for it, <laughs> which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. <laughs> steal by line and level is an excellent pass of fate. <laughs> he has another garment for it. <gasps> Come, monster, put some lime upon your fingers, and away! Ah, if men on, we shall lose our time, and all be turned to barnacles, 
or apes with foreheads villainous lords. Oh. to lay to your fingers. Bear this to where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to, carry this. And this. I and this. How is the day? Past the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so, and first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion that you left in charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, in the lime grove that weather fends your cell. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them brim full of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, him that you term, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard like winter drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works him that if you now beheld him, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. As thou which art but air, a touch of feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself one of their kind, but where they shall as sharply passion as they, be kindlier moved than thou art, though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick. Yet with my nobler reason against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release the Mariel. My charms I'll break. Their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves. Indeed, upon the sand with printless foot to chase the heavy Neptune, and to fly him when he comes back. <coughs> you demi puppets, at by moonshine do the green sow ringlets make. Where of the you not bites? And you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azure vault set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire and rifted Joe's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong based promontory have I made shake and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers oaked and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear of Joah. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms of the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Best comforter to an unsettled fancy. Cure thy brains now useless, boiled within thy skull. 
There stand for you our spell stop. Oh, holy Gonzalo, honorable man, mine eyes even sociable to the show of thine fall fellowy drops. The charm dissolves apace, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason. Oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver and a loyal sir to him thou followest, I will pay thy graces home both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonso, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a further in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood, you brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse in nature, who with Sebastian, whose inward pinches therefore are most strong, would here have killed your king. I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me. Ariel, fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell. I will this case me myself present as I was some time villain. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Where the bee sucks, there suck I. In a cowslip's bell I lie. There I crouch when owls do cry. On a bat's back I do fly. After summer merrily. Merrily, merrily shall I live now. Under the blossom that hangs on the bough. Why, that's my dainty Ariel. I shall miss thee, but yet thou shalt have freedom. Invisible as thou art with the kingship, there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches, the master and the boatswain being awake, and forth unto this place, and present there, prithee. I drink the air before me, and return or ere your pulse beat twice. All Tom and trouble. Wonder and amazement inhabit here. Some heavenly power guide us from this fearful place. Behold, Sir King, the wrong Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body and to thee in thy company I bid a hearty welcome. Where well, thou beest he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as a flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends with which I fear a most strange madness held me. This must crave, and if this be at all, a most strange story. Thy dukedom I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honour cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the eyes that will not let you believe things certain. <laughs> Welcome, my friends all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded I could hear plucky his highness frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. Now for you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest Prospero, uh, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, who three hours since were wrecked upon this shore. Where I have lost, how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her aid, of whose soft grace for the like loss... I have her sovereign aid and rest myself content. You the like loss? As great to me as late, and supportable to make the loss have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself were muddied in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this 
Lost Tempest. I do perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. Their words are natural breath. But howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero and that very duke which was thrust forth a Millen, who most strangely, upon this island, where you were wrecked, was landed to be the lord on uh, yet no more of this. For it is a chronicle of day by day, and not a relation for a breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects none abroad. Pray you look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Huh? No, oh, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this should prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou came hither. Oh, silly. wonder! How many beauteous creatures are there here! How wonderful mankind is! Oh, brave new world that has such people in it! Tis new to thee. Who is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your elf's acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Ah, sir, she is mortal, but by immortal providence she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter, sir, to this famous Duke of Millen, of whom so often I have heard renown, but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life. And second father, this lady makes him to me. I am hers. But, oh, how oddly will it sound, that I must ask my child forgiveness. Nay, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoken at this. Look down, you gods, and on this cup or drop a blessed crown. For it is you that have chopped forth the way that brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. It was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become kings of Naples. All rejoiced beyond the common joy, and ride with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage, did Clarabelle, her husband, find at Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, a wife for he himself was lost. Prospero, a dukedom on a poor idol, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Oh, give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so, amen. Oh, now look, sir, look, sir. Here are more of us. I prophesied if there were gallows on land, this man could not drown. Now blasphemy that can swear his grace all aboard. No tongue on shore, no oath on land. What's the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company. The next our ship, which but three glasses since we gave out split, is tight and yare and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Sir, all this service have I done me since I went. Trixie Spinney. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Arise and say how thou camest hither. If I did think, sir, I were well awake, I'd strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and how we know not, all clapped under hatches, where even now, with strange and servile noises of roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling chains, and more diversity of sounds, all horrible, we were awaked. Straightway, a liberty where we beheld our royal good and gallant ship, our master capering to eye her, on a trice so ple please you, even in a dream where we divided from them, was and not, loping hither. Was not well done? Bravely, my diligence. Well, this is a strange amaze as M. and Prado, and there is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. So Morical must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business, and pick pleasure which shall be shortly single our resolve you, which to you shall seem probable of every of these happened accidents. Till when, uh, be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Come in, a spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie this person. <laughs> Sir, my liege, how fares thee? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Let every man search for all the rest, but no man take care of himself. For all is but fortune. Horatio, bully monster. Horatio. If these be true spies which are set in my head, here's a goodly sign. Oh, set of us. These be brave spirits. Indeed. How fine my master is. 
And the fairy will chastise me. Oh, now, my lord Antonio, what things are these? Will money buy them? Very right, for one of them is a plain fish, and no doubt marketable. <laughs> Mark but the badges of these, then, my lord, then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs, and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, according to a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these you must know and own. This thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. <laughs> Is not this Stefano, my drunken butler? You don't know where any wine. And Fritillo is reeling right. <laughs> how have they found this grand liquor that has yielded them? Uh, say how thou camest hither. I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that I fear will never out of my bones. <laughs> I shall not fear fly blowing. Why, how now, Stefano? That's not me. I'm not Stefano, but a cramp. You'd be king of the Isle sit on. I'll sit in the ass tall one, man. <laughs> this is a stranger thing, is that I looked on. He's as disproportionate in his manners as in his shape. Go, sit it to myself. Take with you your companions. As you look to have my pardon, look you trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will, and I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to away. Hence and bestow your love. He's where you found him. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I doubt not shall make it go quick away. The story of my life and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this isle. And in the morn I'll bring you to your ship. And so to Naples, well, where I have hoped to see the nuptial of these, our dear beloved, solemnized. And thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise thee calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious that shall catch your royal fleet far off. There you chick, that is thy charge. Then to the elements be free, fare thou well. Please you, draw near. Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have's mine own, which is most faint. Now it is true I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples, let me not. Since I have my dukedom got and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and freeze all faults, as you from crimes would pardoned be. Let your indulgence set me free. 